Hi everybody, Robin here with a little explanation about a couple of very neat little features in Photoshop Elements called the Burn and the Dodge tools. Uh, burn and Dodge, if you've ever done any colour or black and white printing in the wet bench darkroom, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Burning in means making areas of the picture darker, dodging goes in reverse, makes areas of the picture lighter. The whole point of this, and the reason that, that I get very excited about it, is simply this. If we use levels to lighten or darken a picture, you see it basically impacts everything in the picture. It's called a global change, whereas burning in and dodging simply uh, affect a change under the area of the brush, and the brush is that circle that you see on the screen at the moment. So we can make the brush go bigger or smaller, um, faster or smoother, rougher or or cleaner depending on the brush type that we use. So for example the first thing I'm going to do is clean up this girl's spots here. She's using this amazing thing called the spot healing brush. Look at that bing. She had a couple of good spots on that day. So we can just fix them up that something that no amount of makeup is going to is going to work its magic on. Okay now what are we going to do? I suppose one of the things we need to do is work out a plan. What are we going to do? I'm going to lighten this girl's eyes. So just the whites of the eyes just a little bit. So to do that, I need the dodge tool. To do that, I need to set the dodge tool to, I think in this case, highlights, because there is already a highlight there, the white in the, in the eyes. Okay, I'm going to shrink this down. And incidentally, if you use the square brackets on the keyboard, left square bracket goes smaller, the right square bracket goes larger. So it's a lot easier than having to scroll up here and fiddle around with this little feature here. So I'm going to set it to around about 15%, and now you can see... I'm a little bit careful. I can just whiten up the the whites of the eyes. Okay, that's before, that's after. So it just cleans things up a little bit. I'm now going to go in reverse, and I'm going to choose the burn tool. There we go. And I'm going to set the burn tool to shadows. And again, the burn tool shadows works well when we've got it set to a small number. And the reason we keep it to a small number is this. If I choose a big number and go, I'm just going to make her eyebrows go darker. Wallop. It's too much, and you can see I've slipped over the forehead there, and it's gone sort of orange. You know, I could go around the nose and, you know, it's just horrible. It's just like full power. So never, ever have these tools set to full power. With the shadows particularly under 20%, I reckon. Okay, and that's under 20%, you know, about 15% or so. So again, I can just do that. And you can see I've just darkened the eye, eyelash, the eyelash, the eyebrow a little bit, but not too much. Okay, and we can run over the nose and just darken the shadow under the nose a tiny bit, particularly the lips. Okay, and that's going to bring the detail out. Now, you can sort of sit there painting away and go, this is, this. I feel ripped off, I can't see anything. Always duplicate the layer. As you can see here, you go to the menu and you choose Duplicate Layer, and you can give it a name. I just prefer with whatever it comes up with, which is usually Background Copy, so that when I turn that layer off, I see the original, including all the spots. Turn it back on again, you can see what I'm doing with the Burn tool on the lips. I may want to just change this to mid-tones, just darken those mid-tones down just a smidge. And again, off, on, making a huge improvement. Okay, What I might do here is then just darken down some of her shoulder. And again, I need to go burn tool, probably the mid-tones, and probably let's just choose a little bit more, maybe 25% or so. Exposure is very misleading. What it means is speed. How fast are you going now? There we go. And just a little bit into the top there before afterwards. So I'm thinking maybe I've just done a tiny bit too much on the right hand side of her face as we look at it here. So I'm going to then change the tool around, go to the dodge tool, and choose mid tones. And I might just lighten up some of the tone there. Don't want to do it too much because the dodge tool, more so than the burn tool, actually shows a little bit weird. See, it looks a tiny little bit wishy washy. Okay, so I can do it a little bit, but probably not as light as I can go dark, if that kind of makes sense. It doesn't, but I'm sure you know what I mean. And there's my finished result before, afterwards. Subtle, isn't it? Okay, but it just adds a little bit of strength to certainly the structure in her face. You know, I can lighten the sort of shadow there just to lighten that shadow on her nose as well. There's a little smudge. Get a bit of discoloration there. 110 things you can use this tool for. Probably the hardest thing is knowing when to stop. And there we can uh, save multiple versions of the same image simply uh, because we can't make the decision. Uh, we could, for example, go here. Let's just uh, revert to what it was before. I think we'll just revert. So here's a picture. You know, one of the things that I see uh, an awful lot in these 
classes uh, and in my tutorials is students just take a picture and they just burn away when there is nothing there to burn. Here, this is fantastic, I can use levels and I can just brighten up the image and lighten it up. So essentially I've got loads of detail in the foreground but I've overcooked the background a little bit. Ooh, no problem. So I choose the burn tool and I choose a very big brush, you know, a whopping great big brush and I'm going to choose mid-turns at about 20% and I can just whiz this very very quickly. Let's just undo that and just make a copy layer so you can see here. Look at the sunshine. It's almost like putting in extra detail into that building front. Burning down the sky again, bringing in that colour. This tool will only emphasise colours or tones or textures if they're already there. So the point being, if we have an image that is has you know components in it like this that are grossly overexposed, such as the sky, like this, if I burn in the sky here or the clouds, nothing will happen because it's grossly overexposed and the file doesn't actually hold any tones in there to burn in. As it happens, the original file here, which is this one, has a load of detail in it and allows me to burn or dodge some of the detail back into the picture. Okay, moving on, here's another great example of what we can do. If I duplicate this layer and I start burning in, I'm going to choose to burn in some of the shadows. Pull that down a little bit, you can see we can make dramatic impact to some of the tones in this picture simply by making the black areas a little bit blacker or the darker areas a little bit darker. I can then choose the dodge tool, set that to highlights in the opposite way and I can go over some of these. Let's go bigger brush. I'm doing this very quickly so you may think oh, it looks a little bit bodgy but of course if we spent you know 10 or 15 minutes on it we'd get a much cooler looking result. Okay and there you go so let's just fiddle around with that one just brighten up the brickwork in the foreground here. I may just go back over this and burn in some of those shads again and just show you very briefly that's before that's after that really puts a little bit of visual impact into the image so top tips for using this particular technique number one use a fairly big brush number two keep that brush moving okay and set the exposure which really means the speed around about 10 15 20 25 percent don't go any faster than that because then you will begin to actually burn in and you'll see track marks across the picture so big brush, keep it moving, keep the exposure at a reasonable setting, and don't be afraid to go forwards and backwards, burn, dodge, burn, dodge. Don't choose, and finally, don't choose any images where the picture is grossly underexposed or grossly overexposed, because burning and dodging really won't be uh, of great help there. You just need to find yourself a nicely exposed picture and work on that.